y'all pray for me, okay? That the word will go forth in power. Uh, I'm having a little pain in my body and just uh, asking for the strength, the strength of the Lord. I'm speaking to you tonight from the subject of uh, <laughs> don't make room for jealousy. Don't make room for jealousy. Just saying that song. Don't let hatred be among you. Don't let jealousy be among you. And as you can see from my little collage up here, you can see some of the results of what jealousy can occur. You see somebody who's got, doesn't have a whole lot of trust in his life. He's got the binoculars up there spying and scoping. And uh, you got some, some, uh, some, some folks over here in a cat fight because uh, uh, Got some had some disagreements, and you got somebody who's caught up in uh, uh, in the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh, and all evidences of what can occur when jealousy. Who here has experienced jealousy at one time or another in your life? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it tonight. We can turn that projector off. We're going to talk a little bit about it tonight. Amen. How many of you are ready for the word of God tonight? Amen, amen. Uh, I, I have been uh, kind of laboring over the word and uh, asking the Lord to really speak to us tonight. Amen. So as we touch on this subject tonight, don't leave room for jealousy. Amen. Don't leave room yeah. for jealousy. Romans chapter 13 Verses 13 and 14, and it reads, Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, to gratify its desires. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm just asking for your presence. I'm asking for the Holy Ghost. Just pray with me, saints, that the word of God will go forth in power and that our hearts and minds will be prepared to hear what you have to say and that our hearts will be turned toward the seriousness of what it means to serve you, God, and that we'll not take it for granted and not take things lightly. God, as the word has weighed heavily on my heart, I ask you to examine my heart, and Lord God, uh, let uh, me not be found wanting, O oh God. I come before your throne humbly right now asking for forgiveness for anything that is not like you and me, and help me to be one that preaches the word in power, but also ones that will not be a hypocrite, but practice what I preach as well in Jesus name the saints of God said amen. amen I'm sure you've heard of the popular slogan there's always room for jello <laughs> but tonight I want to leave you with a different message it says don't leave room for jealousy don't leave room for jealousy because if we're honest with ourselves we all get envious and jealous at times we see something somebody's got or something that we like or something that we want. We see somebody with the somebody that we want. Uh -huh. <laughs> somebody's got the body or the clothes that we want. And before you know it, we hating. Uh, we running interference. We throwing shade. We blocking. Uh huh. And if you got it real bad, then you want to start to read somebody, huh? And you, you're ready to fight and pull some hair and things like that. You want to go for what you know because they done crossed the line and laid their hands on what's mine. Uh, can I just give you a little wisdom tonight? This is for free. Mm. I need you to know tonight, baby, if you got to fight somebody to try to keep somebody with you, they ain't yours to begin with. You'll catch that on the way home. All right. But now you want to sleep with this one and sleep with that one, trying to get the attention. And pretty soon, it ain't long before you walk in somebody in every room you in, you done been with everybody in the room. 
jealousy. I'm talking to you tonight. Don't make room for jealousy. Sometimes jealousy can crop up in subtle ways. It, it can be in our own minds, perhaps as we daydream, wishing things in life could be different or better. And maybe we're questioning God about some of the circumstances in life and God, why are things the way they are? Yeah. And I need you to know tonight that God can handle any question that you may have. But you need to ask yourself, are you honestly seeking an answer to a struggle that you're having in your life? Or are you questioning the ways and the will of God Amen. for your life? You. There's a very fine line between the two, but there is a line. And God does have a standard for our lives. And when we live outside the standard, we are in sin. And thankfully, we serve a loving God. Amen. God is the God of the Old Testament, and he's the God of the New Testament. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loves us so much, even in spite of our sins, and because of that, we ought not to treat our sins as if they are of no consequence. For there is indeed consequences for sin. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. So it is my prayer tonight, atmosphere of praise, that we will all evaluate our own lives. And as we are convicted by the Holy Spirit about the sin of jealousy, yes, that's what I said. Jealousy, it is a sin. It is indeed a sin. Uh huh. See, jealousy falls right in line with some of those other terms in the Bible like covetousness. And envy, which is described as one of the deadliest of sins. It is my prayer tonight that as we have been focusing all this month on generosity, that we will understand that we cannot begin to operate authentically in generosity unless we honestly deal with generosity's most formidable enemies, Amen. jealousy and envy. That tonight as we look at ourselves and by the spirit of God and the word we will deal with sin the way it should be dealt with. By asking God to forgive us and let our minds be changed and ever transformed and decide to live better. Better lives according to the will of God. God wants you and me to have complete freedom over sin. God wants to bring us to the freedom that only comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody bless his name. Amen. There are numerous examples in the scriptures with regard to jealousy. But even when you merely look a, a little closer at the word jealousy, there's something vital that stands out. The word jealousy itself contains the word lousy. And one thing is for sure, the feeling of jealousy also makes you feel lousy. The word jealousy in the Webster's Dictionary is defined as zealous vigilance. But somehow that definition doesn't seem to do the word jealousy any justice. Jealousy is a very powerful force of emotion. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Proverbs 27 and 4, Anger is cruel. Uh huh. Fury is overwhelming. But who can stand before jealousy? Uh huh. Now we're talking. See, that seems to give a little more meaning to the word jealousy, doesn't it? Uh, uh, and I ask you, saints, tonight, whatever happened to the days when everybody was just happy for everybody else? Uh huh. Uh <laughs> What? Does anybody remember the days when nobody ever wanted something that someone else had? Uh, I don't think so, baby. <laughs> Those days never existed. <laughs> and truth be told, there was probably never been a time when somebody didn't want somebody else's something or their somebody. See, jealousy is probably one of the world's oldest emotions. It's been around since the beginning of time. 
uh, uh, anybody remember the story of Cain and Abel? Uh huh. That's a prime example of jealousy run amok. And as we are evaluating ourselves tonight, we should understand, if we can, what exactly causes jealousy, why it starts, and how we can overcome it. And I'm telling you tonight, don't make room for jealousy. Amen. Amen. We're not going to be long. I'm going to move fast. But I want you to hear this tonight. Uh, because one of the primary causes of jealousy is unmet expectations. That's one. Unmet Somebody say it. Unmet, Unmet. Expectations. expectations. Many times we place unrealistic expectation, expectations on ourselves and the people around us. And oftentimes we feel as though things should come easier or perhaps faster to us. We say, I should be here. Or, I, I should be this far along in life. I should be hanging out with these kinds of people. I should be making this amount of money and driving this kind of car. And just when things don't happen when we think they should, or as fast as they think they should, then, then here they come. Mm. They got on what you want to be wearing. They driving what you want to be driving. And they booed up with who you want to be booed up with. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And all of a sudden, you feel this surge of ugly green emotion called jealousy. Your unmet expectation and a sense of entitlement has gotten the best of you. And for some reason, many of us have this ingrained attitude that we're grand. Mm. That, that is, we think we are entitled to things and things being a certain way. Who here remembers leaving your parents' house for the first time? And you thought that your standard of living should at least be equivalent to what their standard of living was. Uh -huh. But you didn't consider how many years and years that your parents worked to get where they were. Uh -huh. And maybe that's not your experience tonight. But let me talk about us for a minute. Can I do that? Mm -hmm. uh, about those of us who came up or who are still on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. Incomes and those of us who don't see a lot of money passing through our hands, or at least not as often as we'd like to. Uh -huh. I'm talking about us who, who got some financial issues some financial problems. And all too often, we can feel entitled to. A lot of times, we feel entitled to buy things we really ain't got no money for. Mm. And, uh, uh, and even though we know we're going to be in a bind at the end of the month, somehow, the new shoes and the new outfit and the, and the latest cell phone and the iPad and the latest tech toy, somehow, appearing as though I got it going on, that I'm richer than I really am uh, has taken a front seat to getting out of debt. Mm. Somehow it's become more important than taking care of my bills mm -hmm. because we have this sense of entitlement. The question I'm asking you tonight, have we become so insecure about our individuality and our identity that we cloak ourselves in things? And surround ourselves with entourage, so much so that we don't even know who we are anymore, let alone appreciate who God has made us to be. See, it's real easy to look at other people and wish you had what they have. But for some, it doesn't stop there. You start berating yourself, telling yourself, well, I must be a loser for not having what they have. And eventually you start to believe your own height, start believing the negative junk that you tell yourself, and worse off, you start living it out. Hmm. The next thing you know, you develop insecurities in your relationships and in your perceptions of everything. I'm telling you tonight, don't make room. Don't make room for jealousy. Amen. Amen. So you ask, Pastor, what, what can I do? What can I do about jealousy in my life? What can I do? After hearing all this stuff that, that, that can cause feelings of jealousy, you may feel like there's just no hope. You may think I'll always come up short on something, but I need you to know tonight that does not have to be the case. 
The good news is that there are some things that you can do. That you can do to stop the jealousy ball from rolling over you. And if you'll allow me, I'll share them with you. One of the first things that you can do to eliminate jealousy in your life is stop comparing yourself to other people. The Bible says in Psalms 139 and 14 that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Uh huh. You were created as a very unique and special person. God had a plan for you long before you even took your first breath. Hallelujah. I need you to relish on that thought for a little while. God was thinking about you before you were even conceived. I need you to hold on to that thought for a little while. And tonight, and from this day forward, I need you to love the fact that you are special to God. And what God has in mind for you isn't the same as what he has in mind for somebody else. I need you to understand tonight that you don't have to have bad feelings thinking that you don't have all the qualities or all the features or all the money or anything else that you think you need that other people got. Your journey is just that. It's yours. Your journey is just that. It's your journey. Your journey with God. Number two, I'm not told you I won't be alone. If you're going to overcome jealousy in your life, you're going to have to stop worrying about you all the time. Amen. You're going to have to start finding ways to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. When you change your focus from yourself, all of a sudden your self-image starts to improve. You get to experience a feeling of satisfaction that only comes when you're blessing someone else. Amen. Amen. Your priorities start changing. Mm -hmm. right. And one day you realize the things that used to uh, uh, upset you and make you so jealous and so crazy hey. don't bother you so much anymore. Hey. You I'm talking about not making room for jealousy. Uh, if you're going to overcome jealousy in your life, you're going to have to stop wanting what other people have if you're not willing to go through what they did to get it. When you see a person who's physically fit and positively fierce and fabulous and sickening, as they say, <laughs> did I get it right? <laughs> It's easy to feel really jealous. But the question is, are you willing to work out every day? Are you willing to eat healthy and, and do what's right so you can look like them? No. So then what you got to be jealous for? If you're not willing to go through what they do to look the way they do, then you don't have anything to be jealous about. Whatever God's given you is what you got. It. Work it. I tell you what, you know, I used to go through life really feeling bad about myself being a big man and all this other stuff. And I lived in California where body image was the thing and you had to do all I about wanted to kill myself, starving myself to death, trying to be skinny. That ain't me. I still look good. You got to learn how to love yourself. And sometimes you need to, as soon as you get out the shower, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, look what the Lord has done. All this. <laughs> I do it. I say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and if you really want to overcome jealousy in your life, you're going to have to start focusing on all of what the positive is Amen. and about your life. Amen. God has given you so many wonderful gifts that many other people don't have. Amen. You got to start using those gifts to help others. You got to focus on what God has done for you, on the goodness of God. And since your mind can only consciously think about one thing at a time don't you think it makes sense you ought to make the best of that one thing keep your mind focused on the good things that God has done the things that will change the way you feel and change the way you act Hallelujah. 
The Bible tells us that breaking free from jealousy starts with your thoughts. And when you change the way you think, you'll change the way you feel and the way you act. Hallelujah. When you change the way you act, you'll change the way you live. My God, my God, my God. And all that drama you say everybody else is bringing to your life, you can squash it. Yeah. Hmm. When you change your mind and give no place to the enemy, when you don't make room for jealousy. Hallelujah. Amen. When you don't make room. Why am I dealing with this tonight? Because I need to make it clear once again that in this house, we are here to serve the Lord Amen. and nothing else. Uh, we are here to learn how to live lives that are pleasing to God. If you are here for any other reason than to learn how to serve and live for God, then you might as well not come. In fact, I prefer that you don't. All right, all right. Get it, get it. If all you want to do is keep on living in foolishness and in darkness, there are plenty of places that you can go do that. But if you want to finally get over yourself and become a follower of Christ and, and not be the same as you once were, yeah. the Bible tells us what that ought to look like. Yeah. The Bible does tell us what that ought to look like. And if you had your finger in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32, and you know I do Pastor Byron's version, so it might read a little different than yours. It's what I'm going to insist upon here in the house of the Lord as the Bible tells us what the believer's life ought to look like. That you must no longer, atmosphere of praise, live as those who do not know God. Amen. For the way that they think is pointless. Their understanding is darkened and they are separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Because their hearts are hardened toward God. They have lost all sensitivity and have given themselves over to everything that satisfies only the flesh. Indulging in every kind of impurity. And they never stop wanting more. This, however, is not the way of life for you. If you have accepted the truth that is in Jesus, you are taught tonight to put off your old self. Stop acting like you used to. Uh -huh. That way is corrupt by its deceitful desires. You have been made new in the attitude of your minds. So put on your new self. The one that is created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. All of you need to stop all the lying. Tell the truth to each other because we are all members of the same body. When you get mad, don't let it cause you to sin. You ought not let the day end and you still be angry. And stop giving the devil room to work in your lives. Anyone who has been stealing must stop stealing. Do some work. Do something useful with your hands. So you can have something to share with those in need. Stop letting all this unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Only talk about what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. That it may benefit those who listen. Stop grieving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that identifies you as the Father's children. Stop grieving the Holy Spirit. 
Get rid of all your bitterness. Get rid of all your rage. Get rid of all your anger. And stop being like you always need to be in a fight with somebody. Stop talking mess about everybody. Stop trying to get back at everybody. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other. Just like how through Christ, God has forgiven you. This is the kind of God-centered life that we are striving for here at AOP. If the God-centered kind of life is not what you want to strive for, then there are many places, even churches, where you can go, where you can carry on and fight in the sanctuary and out in the parking lot, and you can hate on each other, and you can cuss each other out, and you can sleep with one another and try to make each other jealous and keep up drama. There are plenty of places where you can go do that. There are many places you can go and and, and people you can hang out with to do all those things, but you will not be living the life that is of a child of God. And any other life than the life of the child of God is not what we are doing here. Romans 13, our opening text, 13 and 14, children of God, let us walk properly as if it were daytime all day long as opposed to those who live one way during the day and act like they ain't got no sense at night children of God do not have sex with multiple partners whether it's one at a time or all at the same time it yields the same result children of God do not spend their time getting drunk and having sex with any and everybody just being sensual Children of God are not always into it with each other and ready to fight at the drop of a hat and jealous of each other. Children of God. Children of God. Children of God. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Stop feeding it and don't leave any room. It's about the music you listen to. Yes, it is. It's about the TV shows you watch. Yes, it is. You think it's of no consequence. It's about the websites you go to. Yes, it's the distractions of the flesh and the world to your spirit. It's like junk food is to your body. And over time, a consistent diet of garbage has you getting weaker and weaker. And you start getting sick. Your immune system begins to become diminished. And you can't fight stuff off when you come under attack. You're overcome and defeated because you gave too much room in your life for the devil. Too much room for the flesh. Not enough room for the things of the spirit. Not enough room for the things that are life to you. And I'm telling you tonight. Don't leave any room for the devil to have a foothold. Because the minute he gets his toe in the door, it, it, you've given him access. You've given him access. You've given him access into your life, into your affairs. And some of us understand that sometimes when you get people in your house, it's hard to get them out. And so this is what I'm trying to say. The enemy is always trying to get a foothold into your affairs. And you are in control of the door. You're in control of the door. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Hear me. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I know that we have people here who are helping each other and moving people into their houses and helping them and doing loving acts. So I'm n- I don't hear what I'm not saying. This is a spiritual conversation, okay, about, let it, about giving the enemy access and, and, o- and opening yourself up to things. And it, and it, and, and it is, it is. 
you, it, you know, we, we listen to this music and, and it's communicating all kinds of worldly ideas to us. Uh, the shows we watch, the websites we go to, and the more time we spend with that stuff, get it together, get it together, get it together. Hear the word of God. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Because we, 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 we're, we're in the last of the last days. And it's time to get it together, church. Really. Really. We've been, we've been shut out for a long time. And now the, the, what the Bible says is that the last should be first. The last should be first. And God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. But he's not going to pour it, his spirit out into dirty vessels. He's not going to pour his spirit out in dirty vessels. And so I wanted to, I, I, I'm preaching this message tonight. What? Because in, in, in light of all the thing, information that has been flying around across the church house and people coming down here and wanting to fight and all kind of stuff, this is not what church is about. And we have a responsibility to stand up and live out the truth and the reality of relationship with Christ. And not get caught up. Not get caught up in the mess. Not get caught up in foolishness. And, and you're not going to know how to do that unless you really know what the word says. You, I bet you some of you didn't even know that was in there. Somewhere down in your spirit you knew right from wrong, but you didn't know it was in black and white. That it speaks directly to our situation as the church. And so we need to walk in love toward one another. We need to learn how to forgive one another. Stop looking. Stop fault finding. Uh -huh. Stop trying to point out everybody's little stuff. Find the good and build them up. Build them up. And the more that we are built up in the faith, yeah, all that other stuff is just going to drop off. It's going to drop off. What it said is make no provision. What's a provision? When you go out... When you go out into the wilderness, you take provisions with you. It's what you eat. It's what you supply yourself with. It. Stop supplying the flesh, and it will die. Feed your spirit, and it will live. Feed your spirit, and it will live. That's the word of God tonight. God bless you. If the word of God has touched your heart tonight, and there... The Holy Spirit is convicting you about maybe some thoughts, some actions, some things that you know that you need to get right before the Lord and that you don't want to pass this opportunity. You don't want to yes. go out of these doors without having taken the opportunity to get it right before God. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, these altars. Altars are uh, open. We need to recognize that the altar is a very vital place for the Christian Amen. believer. Uh, and not to be shy. Nobody's in here judging you. But the Lord says, if you're ashamed of me I'll be before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. And there's nothing wrong with coming to the altar and saying, God, I just, I want to make it right. That's all. That's why we have this time. It's called a time of decision. A time of decision. I'm deciding that today I'm not going to be like I was yesterday. Uh, that as I'm yes. going forward with my life, I'm, I'm drawing closer to doing and living the way God wants me to live. But I realize I cannot do that without the Holy Ghost. I can't do it without the power of God. I can't do it without surrendering to the will of God. So yes. this altar is open so that you can give it all to the Lord. And these deacons will pray with you. Uh, if you're leaking special prayer from me, I, I don't have to be chained to this keyboard. I can pray for you too. But come forward as you will in the name of Jesus. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. my hands and I bow my knees as I worship at your throne. 
need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. I have a um, a brief announcement. Uh, on uh, last Sunday during our um, deacon and staff training. Actually, sometime before that, but the Lord spoke to me, <clears throat> and that um, an individual from our midst is going to uh, be uh, recognized as a candidate for deacon in training. And so, I would like us to um, acknowledge uh, Brother Corey Pent, if you'll stand. He'll be participating in our deacon and training program as we're moving forward. And I need you to understand that it is our intent to ordain him as a deacon. And as the as the training process goes forward, um, uh, he's been faithful and he's been um, eager, and uh, he has a real commitment to this ministry already. And so um, I, I consider him a valued asset. And so as he has accepted his induction into the deacon and training program, uh, it would be my request that you all refer to him as deacon and training, Corey Tent. Amen. Amen. Your hands on my Amen. Come on. I'm not trying to press it. Uh, I just pray that the word of God goes forth in your hearts tonight. And that will not walk out of here and well that was just a nice service and uh, I pray that the word of God will inspire you uh, to become uh, better livers of the gospel and whatever you leave to do tonight take the Lord God with you and let the world know that he's a part of your life amen amen God be with you. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Oh, God be with you. right hands lifted Father God we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house God we thank you for the word that will fall forth all tonight God we thank you for the words that came forth for prayer tonight God we pray that those prayers have been answered God God we ask that you bless the food of which you are about to receive make it nourishment to our bodies minds and souls and now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide in each one of us until we shall meet again and they all that believe they'll sing together. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed into our time of fellowship.